Xbox needs to start making sense. I often talked about why I like the Xbox platform and the positives I see, like the Xbox ecosystem bringing games to gamers everywhere. And I love that Xbox has made a committed effort to backwards compatibility, which just was reaffirmed by Sarah Bond in a report broken by Windows Central. But today, I'm not making a video about the positives. Today is a plea to Xbox executives to start making some sense. For the last several months, Xbox has been taking one step forward and five steps back. At least that's how it feels. I've credited much of this to the changing landscape of the industry, layoffs, AAA budgets and such. But there's no arguing that Xbox's messaging has been incredibly messy. Phil Spencer has a very bad habit of saying one thing and then doing another shortly after. When Xbox acquired Bethesda, he said, If we're an Xbox customer, the thing I want you to know is this is about delivering great exclusive games for you that ship on platforms where Game Pass exists. Not even three years later, he shipped one of those exclusives onto PlayStation, along with three others from Obsidian and Rare to PlayStation and or Nintendo. Places Game Pass does not exist. Words matter. <laughs> and this is seen as a clear betrayal of trust from fans. This year, after weeks of rumors swirling that games like Sea of Thieves and, yes, Starfield and Gears were included, the rumor was that those could be released on PlayStation. Xbox had an emergency podcast where they clarified things for about an hour. On the official Xbox podcast, Phil Spencer discussed that this was a test. And we're going to learn. That there was no promise beyond that. Four games, no promise beyond that. So if you're on those other platforms and you see these four games coming, please don't take it as some signal that everything's coming. It's not. But in the same segment, he said that there is an interesting story for us of introducing Xbox franchises to players on other platforms to get them more interested in Xbox. So why would you not release more games on other platforms? Windows Central, in that same Sarah Bond report linked to, a Verge piece that said Sea of Thieves is the test, and if it's successful, more games are coming to other platforms. You can't keep leaving stuff like that open to interpretation. And if you want to see something truly bizarre, PlayStation is getting exclusive content for Sea of Thieves. Xbox also has its own set of exclusives to celebrate the release of Sea of Thieves on other platforms. But the decision to bring back console exclusive items similar to what they had with the PS2 era is a bizarre one to be sure. And Phil, as a Destiny player who probably played on Xbox, can remember what that was like in the Destiny days. It wasn't fun especially from someone who just asked how Helldivers 2 not being on Xbox is helpful. To me, that's a mixed message, but maybe I'm getting too much into the weeds there. The bigger issue is that the statement and message from the podcast didn't exactly clear much up. That's partially because a day after the podcast aired, he had an internal email published by The Verge where Spencer said, this is a future where Xbox is everywhere consistent with our promise to empower players to play the games you want with the people you want anywhere you want. How is that painting a picture of an Xbox ecosystem that's for Xbox fans who've long been buying their games on the Xbox store, especially those who buy digitally? Because anywhere you want, could include the Switch and PlayStation 5. If Phil is seeing a future the rest of us aren't, he needs to spell it out. It becomes hard to buy into an ecosystem that's having trouble selling its console, having less money to spend in 2023, like everybody has less money to spend, to get enticing titles on Game Pass, and is now releasing games on competing platforms. Or maybe the less money Game Pass thing is just a rumor, as another rumor is that they're spending more than ever to get games on Game Pass. Why would it be a secondhand rumor from Jez Corden who said, I've been told by trusted sources that Microsoft will potentially spend more than ever on third-party Xbox Game Pass content this year, not less, as some have suggested. Well, if that's true, why not tell people? The original Game Pass comment comes from an independent developer who has highlighted that the gold rush is over in reaction to any kind of deal from any publisher. It's not just an Xbox thing. So to be clear, that's not limited to Xbox. But when Xbox was betting big on Xbox Game Pass and statements are coming out saying the well has dried up in the industry, people will start to ask, why am I subscribed to Game Pass? It's one of my favorite services, Destin's, 
because of how easy it is to access games. But analysts have been keen to point out slowing growth with Satya Nadella even on tying his bonus to the growth of Game Pass. Jez Corden said it best when he wrote, when creating messages to your customers, the platitudes start to ring hollow when the actions are so easily perceived to be at our expense. This was in an article that I consider required reading to understand the sentiment from the Xbox fan base right now. Jez closes off by asking, what's the plan? And that's a good question, because if we haven't gotten a ton of amazing exclusives that were promised in 2021, and some of the best we did get aren't exclusive anymore, in 2024, we got Pal World, which was a happy accident, but in the year PlayStation was supposedly going to struggle, they got Helldivers 2, Rise of Ronin, Stellar Blade, and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Xbox doesn't have anything slated until May with Hellblade 2, and besides Pal World, PlayStation is kicking Xbox's butt with nothing. Bill said in an interview with Kind of Funny, and I, I see it out there, I see commentary that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. It's just not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift in some dramatic way. Look, you're not going to sell more consoles, but you will have a lot more fans in your ecosystem if you had more amazing games on it especially when 2024 is set up to be your year. And when your past statements about the Bethesda purchase have been things like, I don't have to go ship games on any other platform other than the platforms that we support in order to kind of make the deal work for us, but then you go and release those games on other platforms, maybe that original statement starts to look a bit flimsy, you know? <laughs> Look, Xbox fans need something to be hyped for right now. There are some cool rumors out there, and I believe in Xbox. But just as I was critical of that kind of funny appearance where Phil Spencer talked about how much Xbox failed, I think it's time to stop talking about failure and needing to port your games to other platforms and start talking about what your plans are for the future. Because we've got nine or 10 more years before Phil Spencer is at retirement age. That's one, maybe two console generations, whatever that looks like in the next decade. What's the plan? Because I talk a lot about what I think you're going to do. Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong, probably more often, but whatever the vision is, I think it needs to start being a lot clearer. Because I know what PlayStation and Nintendo's main play is, more consoles, more award-winning games will love. It's been six years since we heard anything about Gears of War. Halo Infinite is still going, but what's the plan with that franchise? Perfect Dark was announced three years ago, and that studio was basically abandoned. I mean, just look at the list of people who have left. Can we get something about that project that isn't a piece of concept art? I still believe in Xbox, but Xbox needs to start being a lot clearer about what they believe in. Because right now, I don't know what's true and what's nonsense anymore. And I don't think I'm the only one who feels just a little bit unclear about what the play is here. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. If you have watched this far, I do appreciate you. I really appreciate the members and I'm gonna have to add a whole bunch of new members because 10 memberships were gifted today. Thank you so much to all of the members. If you want to become a member of the normal way, you can click that join button right down there. I'm going to get out of here, but check out my opinion piece right here and I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.